Hi, and welcome back to the Studio of Art by Wendy. Today, I want to show you how to deal with a very complex tree like this one and turn it into a piece of art. So first of all, I decided to limit how much of the tree I was going to draw. Instead of the whole big tree, I went down to just one section of it. I used my pencil to give me a sense of size and shape and where things could fit. Now I've switched to my pen. So I go back to each of those shapes and now I'm rendering them a little more tightly, showing some of the characteristics and the bumps and the hollows and crevices that are found on the trees and branches. As you can see, the branches are the main items that help you find places and help you decide where to put your work. Once I had the branches in place, now I could place the clumps of leaves. And this is the thing with drooling trees, is looking for the patterns of where those clumps are. Clumps are going to be shaped sort of like the leaves themselves. If they are a leaf that has sharp edges, then you should have sharp edges on your clumps. Vice versa, if the leaves are more rounded, then the clumps will have a more rounded edge to them. Once, and needless to say, I did not have time to finish uh, this whole drawing and painting uh, in one session. So I was working on it in the evening from the pictures I took. Again, starting with the painting process, I started at the bottom to get the, have it grounded and have a sense of where my colors were. Now I'm working on the branches. Again, the same principle as when I was drawing it, is to get a sense of what the branches were doing. Notice the layers of paint that are involved in the branches to get the moss, the light, the shadows, and also the, um, just the, the old wood. While I was waiting for the tree leaf, the branches to dry before I started to start the leaves, on the other side of the page, I took some of the leaves and some of the uh, acorns that I found on the ground, and I used them to draw and paint um, on my other page. It's nice to have some decorations for your journaling page, and also it gives you something to do while you wait for that paint to dry. So when I start to do the leaves, I'm looking for the clusters. And in this case, I decided to start with the lights. There really is no right or wrong place to start. That happened to be what I wanted to do. Next, I decided to use a neon blue in order to do my whites areas on my tree. And I try, I picked out all of those areas and set them up. Finally, it was time to go into the greens and the darks. As I work on my tree, I look at this as a building process. I'm going from my light colors into my darks and I'm working in the clumps and looking at each of those clumps for what it has, the lights in it, the darks in it, where they are, what kind of shape they have, how much of the shape is each value or color uh, taking up, and slowly build my way around the tree. As you work, you're kind of experimenting at the same time, looking to see how different colors blend and how they mix together to give the sense of depth and clumps to the trees and bring them to life. Sometimes I'll go back and glaze over something and change the color completely, and other times I'll just leave it. It all depends on how it's looking as I work along. As I worked, I also went back to the other page, facing page, and continued working on my little acorn nuts and the leaves as well. And I must admit, I did really enjoy what was happening there too. More color is added. You can see how the branches of the old Gary Oak do provide the structure you need. Around the structure, the leaves are forming clusters. But the clusters have color, but they also have light, dark, mid-tone values, both warm and cold. Treating these clusters as shapes with all of these levels of values and colors will help you create a successful tree. It is also important to make sure that those placement of your shadow areas and lights match the areas of the tree itself and that they, they make sense. 
Wendy teaches outdoor sketching classes in the summer and she teaches in her studio and online throughout the year. Wendy produces original work in pencil and in watercolor. She completes commission work, particularly pet portraits, and produces cards and prints from some of her work.